Okay, we may or may not be live. It seems like we were having difficulties again. This time, hopefully, you have audio. Um, seems like every other live stream we do, we always have to start it twice because we lose audio. I just restarted everything like three times in a row because it wouldn't even do video. So, if you're watching this, then hopefully we're good to go. We are gonna be working on this 2001 Volkswagen Beetle. We're gonna be replacing the wheel bearing. The wheel bearing isn't really making noise. The, uh, the customer is a local engine machine shop, um, personal vehicle. He says occasionally he hears the noise out of the front and he wants both wheel bearings replaced. The car has like 150,000 miles on it. So not a definitive cause. He just wants them replaced so he doesn't have to worry about them failing. He drives this over a mountain pass all the time. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Um, what I do have is I have a good quality German bearing, the FAG brand, um, comes with a bearing and an installation kit with a new snap ring and hardware. So I'm gonna go ahead and yank the wheel off. Um, it does have a locking lug nut. Luckily I had a key laying around so I don't have to search in his vehicle for that. Um, I don't know if the audio is going to automatically level like it should. So if you're wearing headphones, you may uh, pull them out while I run the impact. And those of you that are familiar with Volkswagen, we don't have wheel studs, so you have to be careful when you pull that last lug nut out, the wheel will fall to the ground. And what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna take the whole caliper and bracket assembly off as a unit. Um, so I'm gonna make sure to unplug the brake pad warning sensor, um, maybe, as long as it's not too dirty. You want me to read you the hellos? Sure. We've got Cody, Peekaboo, Gaston Mechanic. Uh, Gaston says good audio, and Cody says nice shirt. <laughs> yep. Um, if We might be live again later tonight as well. Um, the shirt, SNA Auto, Corey over there, good guy, has some good diagnostic videos. So if you haven't checked his channel out, you may want to do that. Um, just a, another Another good dude in the automotive YouTube community. Okay, that is unhooked. So if you take the caliper apart separately, it takes a little longer. You have to take the spring off the front, um, set that aside and hang it, and then take the bracket off anyways. So I'm just gonna take the whole bracket off, get this wire out of my way. And I think that's gonna be like a 17 or an 18 millimeter. Mario says hi. Hey Mario, what's going on? Grab a big ratchet here. Alex Rodriguez, that's cool. And I'm not sure if you can see anything else if you switch to the GoPro. <laughs> so hopefully you know we're seeing us in that camera now um the steering wheel just locked on me so i can't turn the wheel any further than it is now but there's just two bolts on the back of this bracket that i'm pulling out and if for some reason we lose audio um let us know we are by no means professionals when it comes to uh, <laughs> live streaming. Yeah, Gaston said it was good audio. Personally, I have zero audio coming through my headphones, so I'm just trusting. Okay, yeah, you probably can't hear out of those. Yeah. Well, I don't know why you gave them to me then. Luckily, no. We uh, 
we did have a customer come in and tell us that he bought an RV and that he'd be scheduling it for repairs. And we told him, unfortunately, we do not work on RVs. But I have a feeling that he'll end up trying to get us to work on it anyways. You want to switch back? Just did. Read your mind. Um, you don't want to let these hang on the brake hose. So I just have this. Uh, you know, they should be a sponsor of this video, but they're not. We're going to be using a lot of tools from this company. Uh, Mueller Coops. It's just a, uh, a S hook. This one is semi-flexible. You can bend it and adjust it. And then I'm just going to hang it up on the strut for now. Um, I'm going to pull the rotor off. There's a... You can check the GoPro. Yeah, I'm guessing we lost the GoPro. Yeah, GoPro's gone. You change the settings to stay on forever <laughs> and they don't listen. GoPro is definitely not a sponsor. They can sponsor me and we just... Uh, they can sp I think... No, it went back on. Lumix went black for a second. <laughs> And that screw broke off. Not sure if we'll be fixing that one or not. I turned off the brake pad light on a Jetta with coating. Connector was missing. That's for Pizzo. Huh. Um, did you use that with the Rostec BCDS system or like an Autel or what, what scan tool did you use to do that? Okay, let's see. We need to pull the axle nut off. Live stream, multi camera, very fancy, Mario. Um, this is an Austin Mocker or AST tool, 12.30 millimeter socket. I only watch professional live streams. <laughs> um, now that that is off, I'm, while everything is still bolted up, I don't want to take the knuckle loose yet. I'm going to pop this spindle out and I have another tool from Mueller and Coops. It is the giant slide hammer. I'm going to disassemble it just so it's easier to install. I think it has like a 15 or 20 pound slide on it. Unfortunately it doesn't work on many, uh, many vehicles. It's only for four lug and five lug. I bought it hoping it would fit on or work on Toyotas. There are no tapered seats, so there are some adapters we have to use. And it's just a little tapered seat adapter. It comes with three of them when you buy the kit. And unfortunately, I used it once without the adapter and Bent it up. Ottman says bien. Hello. <laughs> no, that's all. <Ola. laughs> Mario is commenting on your GoPro turning off. Sounds like it turned off. Yeah, I have terrible luck with GoPros. I don't think I would ever buy another one. Um, I hear the seven is better but I just can't justify spending another $400 for a tool that shuts off, shuts off randomly. <laughs> My GoPros randomly lose audio, randomly lose video files. Gaston, if, if they weigh enough cash, in front, wave enough cash in front of me, heck yeah, I'll work on an RV. <laughs> Pico, yes, BCDS. Dylan, oh cool, chat's live. <laughs> I didn't realize that the uh, that you could turn that off in the coating. Um, I've never really uh, worried about it. I always sell a sensor when I do the brake pads. Um, I did have a BMW in here a while back that I did brakes on, and the sensor looked fine. Did brakes on it, test drove it, everything was fine. It came back in two days later with the brake pad warning light on. I replaced the sensor. The light was still on. No reset. 
that I could find in the snap-on scanner, but the uh, the little launch scan tool had it. I was kind of surprised. So I'm going to move my toolbox because when this thing pops out of here, it normally uh, goes quite a ways. Um, I don't know if it's on here. I think this small section here is 15 pounds, and then this is another three or five pound weight that I added on. Pico, man, that's a slide hammer. What a beast. I put off buying this for like four years because it's like 600 bucks. But after breaking the other heavy duty one I had, I finally decided to buy this one. Yeah, I don't, I know that they make that, they call it what, the Texas Twister for popping out CV axles, but I don't think it would have enough force for the uh, wheel hubs. Jay just got here, he wants to know if he can start over. <laughs> yeah, let me, uh, let me jump to the other side and we'll start over. Um, I actually do have to do the other side as well. Um, depending on how hot it gets in the shop, with all the air conditioning off, we're running one small unit right now. Um, depends on how long or if we're going to do the other side. I'll probably have another live stream tonight, as long as it's not too hot, doing a misfire diagnostic on a Toyota Highlander. Okay, now we need to unbolt the lower control arm from the knuckle. It looks like this has aftermarket ball joints or control arms because they're not set up like the factory ones. Um, if the GoPro is working, you can switch. I guess I shouldn't make the face while I switch. <laughs> is it working? Yes, it's working. Okay. I got the Mueller Cubes Universal Press Support. Sorry, I don't know if I'm mounting that one. <clears throat> 432650 a few years ago. Pricey, but very versatile. Gaston? Every one of their tools that I have is an excellent tool. They are all very expensive, but well worth it. So normally there's just a bolt that goes into these three locations here. Um, this has a nut in the bolt. So it's a little more inconvenient than the factory setup. Cars Exposed says, hi, that's a slide hammer and a half. I've emailed them several times asking for a six lug adapter and they don't seem to have it. I guess we're going to go with the Lumix. Um, it beeps, but I still have footage. I still see you. Hmm. Nope, there it goes. It shut off? No, it blinked. I think you're still going though. Yell at me when you're ready to switch cameras, though, so I'm going to be in the comments. Okay, go ahead and switch cameras. I'm going to jump inside and turn the key once so I can unlock the steering wheel. Um, one bolt won't come out because it's uh, hitting the knuckle, so that's going to hold us up. I don't have very good limbo skills. Mario, two hits, wow. Guest on. Dang, that slide hammer looks like a little overkill, don't you think? <laughs> Someone actually commented in one of my uh, Subaru videos that there's no way that wheel bearing came out that easy. Like, well, if you have a 20 pound slide hammer, it will. Didn't break a sweat. I'm starting to sweat on this one bolt. Mario, hot in Colorado, open the shop and done. <laughs> Pico, vehicle sided with brake pad sensor wiring was missing. Video 
video very choppy on GoPro. GoPro good now, Mario. Better now, sorry. So is the GoPro working or no? Oh, there's probably a slight delay. Yeah, it was a little choppy. Okay. PJ, I made it. What's up, everyone? <laughs> Hey PJ, welcome. We're just doing some wheel bearings on this Volkswagen. Now that I have all that stuff out of the way, um, we can get this bearing pressed out of here. There is a snap ring on the front. Let me know if, let me turn the key off because the headlights are on. Um, let me know if I need to move this camera closer since the GoPro is acting up. <laughs> It's like it hurt me. Maybe it's on voice command. <laughs> it's not supposed to be, but it could be on voice command. Okay. Uh, the next kit I'm going to use is, who makes this one? It's another German company. I think it's called the Hubmaster B90. Can you see that in frame? Yeah. Um, the lid broke off years ago. I only put the lid back on when I put it away. But this tool is a beast for pulling apart wheel bearings. Um, we actually have the Hub Tamer, the Hub Grappler and this and sometimes we have to use pieces from all three so I rarely use the big support we're just going to use the forcing screw Jay break out the amp clamp for the brake line <laughs> Pico it's better to use a big hammer softly than small hammer full gorilla <laughs> we got a, an adapter here with a spacer and then different size cones. I'll have to pull the snap ring out first. But we want to make sure that that wheel bearing will fit through this. And it will. So that's going to be our setup for popping that wheel bearing out. Mario's taking off the camera. Okay, thanks for coming by, Mario. So hopefully the snap ring is not too rusty. We don't get a lot of rust in Colorado. Came right out. But there is rust around that ring. I'm just going to spray some uh, lubricant. Might help that bearing slide out a little easier. And then we also need a plate to put on the back side. We want one that's going to fit on this portion of the bearing. So we have something to press against. And then try to hold it all together just right. You can see I've modified this one. I can't remember what vehicle that was for, but I had to grind a section out. Tapered nut on the back side. switch the GoPro real quick see if it's still turned on it says it is is it okay I don't know why it's beeping can you see everything better with the GoPro that I'm working with here You're probably not supposed to use an impact on this tool, but I always do. Um, I make sure not to put my face around this bearing. I always lean back because I have had this bearing break before. Um, and it left marks in the wall. Bearings out. 
Butler's asking what year the car is. It's a 2001 Volkswagen Beetle, but it should be kind of the same between like 98 and 2006 on the Jetta Golf Beetle. And even the Audi TT is going to be very similar. A lot of rust in Colorado. I have to use torches to loosen up retaining rings. Pico. In Colorado? Um, I don't see a lot of it in my area. But there are areas higher up in the mountains where they put a lot of salt on the roads. And I imagine that they uh, have a lot more rust issues. Um, even we're a few hours from Denver, and even in Denver they have um, worse weather than us. Um, so now we need to push this new bearing in. We need to find one of these couplers that fits on the outside ring here. I did another video on an Audi where I didn't make sure of that, and someone called me out on it. Made sure to tell me I was doing it wrong. No, it wasn't you. And just so everyone knows, Valerie's over at the uh, computer switching camera angles and reading me comments. Warn them about the other camera. because I'm. And I do have it set up where she can click on it and it'll show her in the webcam. And she all, she's really nervous about hitting that button on accident. Um, so this one fits pretty good. It's going to hit the outside race of this wheel bearing. And that's what we want. Uh, there's a couple options here. We can stick this screw in from the back side, which is kind of a pain, so I don't do that um, on every vehicle. If it fits, then we'll do it. But sometimes I just uh, stack stuff up on the front. I don't think we're going to do that on this one. Let me know what you want. You go through. Yeah, I'll trade you. I did O3 RAM manifolds today, rusted throughout. Jake. Oh, nice. How many broken bolts? Pico. Done lots of those. Rather do Dodge than the Fords any day. PJ, I have the Astro version of that tool and I love it. I have thought about getting another one. They do have the, the Astro Pneumatic version on Amazon for a lot cheaper. I think I paid about 500 for this kit. Um, the other one's under 200 I believe. Um, it would just be nice to have a box that is still in good shape. Okay. I normally stick this plate on there still up against the bearing just because it's a nice big flat surface. Then we're going to stack that stuff on there. I'm going to run this one on the back side. You can sw switch if you want. If it'll work. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of rust up there. Okay, it looks like the bearing's in all the way. I'm going to open up this tool, our parts kit. New snap ring. Um, if there was excessive rust in the snap ring groove, I would have cleaned that out, but... It looks okay. Okay, three broken bolts, LOL. Need to weld nuts to it to take three broken ones out. Brutal on each side. Yeah, and we, we do that, and then we also use the uh, Beidler CNC, the mana bolt driller kit. Um, that's a, an easy way, not easy, sometimes there's not room for it, but it's a good way of getting those bolts out if you're not good at welding. GoPro's acting up again. It's still going. It just blinked. Yeah. You can give me a nod if you want me to swap cameras. Let's, I let's you, go ahead. Okay, I see you talking to your Lumix, but that's not what I'm on. <laughs> okay, now that we have the bearing in, we need to press this back on. You guys can buy this um, separate, and you don't have to do this step, 
Um, this one has a little bit of rust. I probably should have uh, got another one, but I didn't. They should be a sponsor. Mueller Coops, another tool. This is a three job puller designed special for getting the race off of these. Um, I'll point that down. You can't see what I'm doing right here, can you? Yeah, you're right on the edge. Okay. If you can't see what I'm doing, let me know. It has a chain with a tensioning bolt that's going to go around this and tighten it down. Pico, we have a hub grappler. Had to get a bunch of new parts for it. Techs that used to work there would beat it with a hammer. I hate <laughs> when people do that to tools. Sometimes it just needs a little loving. <laughs> Hit it with the impact. A slight tap with the hammer, but I agree that they do get abused. Next on, those manifold drilling templates are a lifesaver, worth every penny. Yes, uh, so Lyle makes them, but I'm not a big fan of some of the Lyle stuff, especially a lot of it's knockoff and made overseas. The, the manifold kits from Beidler, um, American made company. It's a, a mom and pop shop. Anytime I have any issues, I call and I get a live person on the phone <laughs> right away. Um, so that's why I like dealing with them. I know that there's a, what Pro Max makes a set, um, but I just really like the Bidler one. Okay, I have that chain on there. I may have to tension it up a little bit once this starts biting down. One. I can't see what you're doing, but I'm also not looking at the screen. It was pretty far away, and Kay. granted, I don't know what I'm looking at anyway, so... Which one are we on? Right now we're on GoPro, and we're closer, but it's darker. Okay. Let me grab the Lumix. I'll zoom in real quick. Do they make a kit for that? Okay. There we go. Hopefully that's a little better quality. Um, three jaw puller. Now the reason you have to use this style and you can't just cut that race off is because of this ABS ring. Um, so this slides right down in there. This works great on the Subarus as well. Took it right off of there, and now we can press this back on. I'm going to reset the camera again. Did you know yours? Yeah. Now what we do is we're going to press this in there, but instead of pressing on the outside, we now want to press on the inside. So that's going to go in the back. Um, I'll have to make sure to do it like this. So this ring is sticking out and we're going to press in. If you don't support the inner race, then it'll separate the bearing in half. I'm not going to lie, I've had success with some of their products, but we've also had a lot of issues with their products. Rest belt, what's going on? Okay, let me set this camera again.
Okay, now the hard part is done. We got the bearing in, we got the hub back in. Um, new snap ring installed before the hub. Let's go ahead and slide this axle back in there. Might have to push this uh, steering rack in a little bit first. Jay, I just send my broken Dorman stuff to Erico. <laughs> And what does he do with it? Pico, only product I've been impressed by I, is their brake line kits. <laughs> Rust belt, done working for the day, watching you work like a fool. <laughs> I don't technically have work today. Um, it's more of a side job. It would have been really fast if I did this this morning when it was uh, about 60 degrees outside in the shop. Mm -hmm. But we spent like three hours troubleshooting our live stream and getting stuff set up. And now it's uh, almost 90 in the shop. So I got the new nut started on there. The lower ball joint is kind of a pain on these. You have to it slides in between two layers of the control arm. So you have to kind of wiggle stuff around while trying to get the bolt holes to line up. And then also the fact that this doesn't have the factory uh, control arm and it's got different hardware kind of sucks. Beat that one in. Okay, Erico sent it to Keith, and I think Keith sent it to Snap On, but I'm not allowed to know. <laughs> what exactly was it? <laughs> Sure. Yeah, I really need to get back on that project and edit some videos. Um, I'm further along in that project than the videos show, and I started editing footage, and I'm missing footage. And you can't, you can't go back and recreate it, or I'm not going. I'm not going to do the work twice. Um, so I may have to just do an update video, skipping some footage. I could live with that. That's probably what, 40 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit? That would be fine. Cool. I'm perfect right now. You're perfect? And you can see sweat off. coming <laughs> off of my face right now. Yep, it's very shiny on the camera. <laughs> yeah. Flat Rate Master has nothing on this. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> We're not Atlanta, Georgia hot or humid, but we're getting there. <laughs> and those of you that were wondering, um, I did tighten those to spec. This, this is a highly calibrated unit, and it, uh, it self-torques everything that I put it on. <laughs> okay, ball joints back in. Let's throw the rotor back on here, get the caliper back on. And we're gonna have a little trouble with the rotor because I broke off the, the screw. I don't have another screw here to hold the rotor on. Um, so we'll just hold it on with some lug nuts. Breast belt, I don't blame you there. I like watching all the wiring videos myself. 80 even in Ohio now. 70 in Rhode Island today. I'll take it, Jay. Pico, 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that, that would be nice. You know, I could always 
put on more clothes or a heavier jacket. But I get in trouble when I take off clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got some other uh, cool stuff going on now um, some of you guys already know but I'm also teaching now so one one class a day I teach uh, intro to auto shop which is a big eye-opener for me on what what kind of knowledge kids in high school have nowadays uh, now I'd never took intro class in high school I went straight on to uh, auto shop one I guess and auto shop two but I took the first one. when I was in high school we called intro to auto shop car wash class my van was squeaky clean <laughs> But it's a good class. Um, I just, I thought the kids would know a little more going into it. But I grew up around cars and in the shop, so I knew quite a bit at an early age. I think, uh, I think it's a good life learning experience for a lot of the kids. Um, right now we're still covering basics. We just did oil changes. Uh, we did four of my, uh, three of my vehicles and one of my dad's. They did strip out the drain plug on one of my vehicles. I kind of wish it was the Toyota Highlander because that one's easy to change out. But it was on my Toyota pickup and I had to pull the front diff to get the oil pan off. Um, I ordered a single oversized plug. I'm hoping that will go in there and, and snug up for now. Because eventually I'll have to build the motor. It's got 300,000 miles on it. But in the meantime, hoping the oversized plug will fit. Pico, cool way to go. Um, you know, I. <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. I told the uh, the auto shop instructor last year that if he ever needed a substitute teacher, um, and I had he gave me a heads up that I could probably come in and help. And he called me two weeks later and said, "Hey, how about coming in and?" and teaching the entire intro to auto shop class because uh, the guy that we had doing that position isn't going to work out. <laughs> so I had to uh, I had to talk with the shop here and and decide if that would work. Luckily the intro class is first thing in the morning. Okay, calipers back on. Uh, bolts are tight, not torqued, but they are tight. Gonna plug in the brake pad warning sensor if it'll plug in. Might need a little lube on the uh, the O-ring. Dylan, kids need good teachers. Yeah, and most of the, most of the kids in the class, you know, they genuinely want to learn about cars. Um, not many of them want to be mechanics. Most of them want to do something else, but. They all drive, or they all want to drive cars. And I, I think that if you're gonna drive a car, you need to know how to check your oil, check your tire pressure, do basic, you know, check a fuse. Why doesn't my cigarette lighter work? So I think it's a, it's a good base level for those kids to learn. Um, we'll see how it goes. I, only, I have them for nine weeks total, each group of kids. I think I have 10 kids in my class right now left. I started with 12 or 13. Um, one kid was absent for a whole week, so they pulled him out of the class just because he wouldn't be able to make it up. And it's actually a college-based class, so they get college credit for it um, free of charge as long as they pass the class, which is awesome. And then if they transfer to the, any of the colleges in Colorado, then all those credits, credits will transfer. Okay, calipers on, bolts are tight, sensors plugged in. We're gonna get the wheel on, and then we can uh, torque this down. Pico, that is why we torque the drain plug at the shop. Everyone's snug is different, but 30 foot pounds is 30 foot pounds. <sighs> Unfortunately, I did give him a torque wrench, and that vehicle <laughs> called for 18 foot pounds. I don't know why it was different than my Highlander. My Highlander was 30 foot pounds. Gave him a torque wrench set to 18 foot-pounds. I don't think, 
he knew how to use a torque wrench. Or at 18 foot pounds, the torque wrench doesn't click that hard. So he probably never heard or felt it click and he just kept turning. And since he had a ratchet this long, it just pulled the threads right out. Question from me. When you were a kid, did you want to be a mechanic? No. <laughs> what did you want to be? I mean, I always knew how to work on my own cars. I mean, I rebuilt my first engine in an auto shop in high school. Um, but when I left high school, I really enjoyed my friends were in bands and I couldn't play any instruments, but I liked the whole band thing. And I liked the, the audio and video part of it. In like rock bands, not band band. Yeah, punk, punk rock bands. <laughs> so I went to school for audio engineering. Originally, I wanted to go to school for video and audio. Um, there's a college, I think it's in Florida, Full Sail, but the tuition was like forty-five or fifty thousand dollars, and I, I didn't want my parents to have to pay for something like that. So I ended up going to a audio engineering only school in Arizona. Um, and at the time, I think that was only like twelve or thirteen thousand for tuition alone. Plus, you had room and board and all that. Um, I think nowadays I looked it up again, and it's like eighteen thousand for their tuition. But now, when you enroll, you get a free MacBook Pro, you get free audio interfaces, um, all that stuff is included with your tuition. Whereas we just had 24 hour access to the school and, and all the audio gear that they had. Okay, I'm gonna just snug the bolt down for the wheel bearing. Um, I normally don't torque it, but we are going to torque it just because it has a weird uh, torque spec. Got to move some of the gear. So I'm going to have Valerie switch tabs to Pro Demand if it's still open. On, oh, you have to open the web browser. I believe it said 200 Newton meters and then you back it off 180 degrees and then it's like 50 or 60 Newton meters plus a degree range. So that's what we're going to attempt. <laughs> what am I doing over here now? Did you open up ProDemand? Switch it to your view. Why did you do that? You like these cute faces I'm making? <laughs> She's making funny faces as she tries to find the information on my computer. I do know that the first step is 200 newton meters. I don't know if this torque wrench goes that high. Like I said, I normally don't torque these. If it doesn't, then we're just going to torque it to whatever. Uh... You guys come over here and show me what you are talking about. Units, newton meters. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to look up the spec. Yeah. Okay. So it is 200 newton meters. What's a step below it? Say 50 newton meters plus 60 degrees, I believe. Um, I honestly don't know what the snap-on torque wrench goes up to in newton meters. 
It might do 200. So I got the e-brake set. I got it in gear um, in reverse because you don't want to send the engine over backwards in case it does spin. Is that it? Am I done on this page? Does it say 50 plus 60 degrees? Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to back it off. <laughs> Am I supposed to be on the GoPro? No. <laughs> well, you're not in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supposed to be on the GoPro. All I see is your face. Sorry. We're not amateurs at all. But at least I caught you before you did it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I forget that sometimes I got to move the camera. So I accidentally hit 210 Newton meters. It says back it off 180 degrees, but since I have weight on the vehicle, I'm not going to go that far. Um, now I got to go to 50 Newton meters. So all the way back down. Michael's here too. Hey, Mike. Almost there. Was it 50 Newton meters plus 60 yeah. degrees? Okay. Positive. <laughs> So that's hardly anything. That's just barely touching. Now we got to go 60 degrees, which I can never hold my torque wrench still for the angle reset. So I have to set it on the ground. Like why 60 degrees? Who came up with that? I'm a little late reading this comment, but I think it was when I asked you if you wanted to be a mechanic when you were a kid. Pico, I did. My mom has a picture of me in a diaper trying to put a fuel filter on my tricycle. It was sometime last year. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 60 degrees. We're good to go. We just need to torque the lug nuts. Which Michael. I do have to put the last locking one in there. Michael, I missed most of the show. <laughs> I'll have to look at it, but it'll probably be live later, or it'll be up for viewing later. I'm not going to Scotty Kilmer this one and unlist all of my live videos. PJ said that you're, you might be doing another one later on the Highlander, but Michael has to edit some videos. Okay. So I can't remember what these torque to. Um, I would let Valerie look it up, but she missed that part of the training on Pro Demand. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't listening to anything you just said. I just heard my name and looked up. She's just like my students, doesn't listen to anything I say. Jay, should have started with tires on pork wrench, not oil pan. Yeah, I should have. Um, I should have brought a digital torque wrench that vibrates and beeps and flashes lights, um, but I didn't. I didn't want to trust them with an expensive torque wrench. The, the school, I don't think we have the uh, digital ones. All we have is the mechanical ones. Oh, I kicked the hubcap underneath the car. <laughs> yeah, made it. Now I'll just reset the camera. back on that page if you wanted me to look it up no that's all right i, I torqued them already okay. uh, all we got left is the uh the hubcap which i can throw on later um yeah i i really should have taught them how to use the torque wrench um we're going to cover flat tire um swapping out that or repairing it next week so i don't know some of the class ordering is a, a little weird we had a uh, we had pro demand training and I'm just following the, the course curriculum, which I'm going to change a few things up uh, for my next group. Uh, we had pro demand training and then the day after that we had vehicle identification, finding the VIN number, the build date, uh, year, make, model, all that stuff. I think that should come first um, because they have to get that information off the, <laughs> off of the vehicle before they can go into ProtoMan and use that information. 
Um, so I'm going to change it up a bit. Plus, the beginning of this year, we got off to a really rough start. Um, not all the students... <laughs> I hate GoPro. Not all the students had um, their laptops. Um, all the students get issued laptops. Some of them didn't. The first week, we were having kids pulled out for orientation, IDs, whatever else. Um, so the first, like, four days were a waste. <laughs> so we... We got off to a rough start. We combined classes a few times to do some of the safety training, the hazardous communicate our hazardous materials communication safety training, and then the vehicle hoist training. Um, so there's another group of kids in the shop at the same time as me. They're all freshmen, and then I have uh, sophomore, junior, senior in my class. Um, they don't let the freshmen take the college class. So they do two separate classes and the other instructor takes care of the freshmen. So sometimes we're together as a group, which is a big class because now we're at like 25 students. Um, and sometimes we're in two separate groups and either he's in the classroom and I'm in the shop or we flip flop or he'll go out to the courtyard and work on vehicles out there. But what I'm excited for is not this week, but the following week, we're going to do basic electrical. Um, I was going through some of the worksheets and like some of them I had to think about, um, you know, they're, they're all tricky. It's like trick questions of parallel series or parallel series and other options um, all in one. They have to identify voltage, current, um, resistance. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we're actually gonna go through the Snap-on 504 certification. Um, so they all go away with that certification. Um, we do Valvoline certification, but Valvoline's system is down and they're not cooperating real good our school is also a subaru university so they can get the first two levels of subaru training done um, that's actually their required grade for auto shop 2. Um, they i think they can go higher but um, that's only if they get all this first stuff done but going higher doesn't give them any extra points for the the class um, any questions about the wheel bearing that i did i know sometimes the cameras were acting up and we were cutting out but if you guys have questions about that, I'll, uh, I'll answer those as well while we're working our way out of this video. Drew's auto is here. Hey, Drew, you got here just in time. See you later. Yeah, he said, <laughs> what I missed, and Jay said, you missed everything. Chad will start over, he said. I, I could start over. We do have a whole other side of the vehicle to do. But, uh, but it's getting hotter. It looks like it's just over 90, 90 degrees in here. If I crank up the swamp coolers, you guys won't be able to hear me. Um, but Drew, I'm gonna do a, as long as it's not too hot, I have a 2008 Toyota Highlander with a misfire. Uh, we're gonna do that diagnostic later tonight. Um, I gotta go get a couple other supplies so that hopefully I can interface everything in for you guys to see easily. Um, plus, I want it to cool down a little bit. Uh, so that'll probably be eight o'clock-ish our time, mountain time. So 10 on the East Coast. Drew, I think you're California, so maybe around seven o'clock, um, if that all works out good. Otherwise, we might do that tomorrow. Pico, LOL, hazardous communication. Maybe it was called hazardous communication. Yeah, I don't know, it was, uh, I thought the title was weird because it was, hazardous materials but it was about the communication side all the uh the msds sds fire extinguishers um it's not the same training that we did back in high school at all it's they're they're getting a little safer and i don't think any of the kids listen all that well um it's an open book test so they they have to pass it with 100 percent. and once they get through that then we can work in the shop is there another one Okay, I'll see y'all later. Okay. Okay, um, we're going to bail out of here. We'll come back tonight when it's hopefully cooler. If not, it'll probably be tomorrow morning. Um, so thanks for watching. If you guys missed it, uh, once it's done uploading through YouTube, I'll switch it back to a public video and you guys can catch up on it. Uh, depending on how it goes, I may leave it public for a while, but um, it may go away if the footage was bad. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, you can introduce yourself if you want. <laughs>
Ty and Valerie? <laughs> I think most of them know. And Michael said that, cool, tonight I can do.